All right, so that's the wrong color. I'm good at this. I promise. Let me do that again and not do it terribly. Set a loop point. Uh, oh, it does. Loop. There we go. I so rarely right-click YouTube videos. Harmony of dissonance. World? Pretty good. It's got good exploration. It does the, the two castles thing, and it thankfully doesn't do it in the same way as Symphony of the Night. It actually is a unique thing where it's the same castle, overlaid. Different enemies, different layout, and they introduce you to it in a really neat way. Because rather than having it be, you know, you beat the game, and then, oh, castle two! You're actually just moving through the castle and into the other one throughout the game. I think that's quite neat. And they have little moments where actions in one castle will open up something in the other. And I think that's that's a good idea. It's good. It can be a bit annoying with, um, you know, going to one place and having it be the wrong place in a castle. So you have to go to a teleporter, swap castles, go all the way back, hit a thing, go all the way back again, hit a teleporter, go back again... And then, you know, then you can get into the room. And there are a few things that are a bit obtuse, like uh, the merchant. Him only showing up if your level ends in either a 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9, or a 2, 4, 8, 0, or 6. Uh, very strange. <laughs> why, why is me without glasses scary? What's so bad about it? What's so weird about this? I fail to see a problem. I'm not taking up the meeting. That's not happening. Not until my hair has grown far more than where it is now. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see... <laughs> I don't see why glasses or no glasses me is weird looking. But you've also only ever seen me with glasses, so... Anyways. Uh, ultimately, well, it's pretty good. There's some annoying bits. But... It's decent. Yeah, you've seen me beanie less, but... I don't think you've seen me with hair. Recently. Yeah, all in all. Like 9 out of 10 world. Really the traversal when you need to... When you need to swap castles can be a bit annoying, and that's probably the only problem with it. I do wish the teleporters that moved you were different colors, so it's not just every teleporter is yellow, and you can't fucking tell which one's which. But ultimately, I like it. I think it's a, I think it's a good Castlevania world. And it's got, you know, neat little references back to Symphony of the Night, like the final boss room being Symphony of the Night's. Um, it is a bit strange that that's how that's designed because this game takes place like 200 years before Symphony of the Night. But, you know, the center of the castle, like the the ritual place, I guess it makes sense that that stays the same. And the outside all changes. Yeah, quite good. And the story? Yeah. For a Castlevania game, I like it. Generally, it's decent. You got the main character, the protagonist. You got the friend who's been corrupted by evil. You've got the love interest that... I don't really know if she's a love interest. She's kind of just a woman they save. I don't know. But, you know, it's basically just a perfunctory story. It is what it needs to be. So, But at the same time, like, I don't like Castlevania's good story. It's so, like, it's... It's alright. Characters... I mean, I like Just... Maxim's alright. I guess maybe if I played as Maxim, I'd be happier with him. Like if I chose to mess around with Maxim mode, but that's too much work. Um, Lydia is there. Death is death. 
Dracula kind of shows up. There really isn't that many characters. But again, I'm, I don't play these games for the characters, I play for the gameplay. Speaking of which, the gameplay is lovely. It manages to be a whip-based Metroidvania Castlevania that has good equipment, it has money, and the money has a point. You can't sell anything, which is a bit of a drawback, but fucking whatever. But no, you can sell gems. But I think I found about ten gems throughout the whole game. And I got way more money until the second half from things other than gems, so... You know. Uh, please was. That's too hot. Zero out of ten. Yeah, no, you've got the dash, you've got the slide, you've got the dive kick, you've got the high jump. All the classic, the double jump, all the classic Castlevania things are here. And they're changed around in a couple ways, like, um, you know, they have the whip upgrades, they have the spell books, they have the crushing boots, I think they were, that uh, allow you to pass through certain ceilings, which, that was used in, like, four places. And it's only four because it's doubled, because of the two castles. So I think that might be the one downside, is... The... Some of the upgrades you get feel kind of gimmicky. And the fact that you have to equip them feels even more gimmicky, because rather than having, say, you know, ah, your whip is now stronger, you can break certain walls. It's, ah, you found a thing, put it on the end of your whip, and then you can break walls. But also, it does no damage, so you're going to be swapping it out. Just make it so the whip breaks walls. Just, just have that. You don't, you don't need to fuck around. There should not be that much inventory management. And then, I wouldn't need to potentially take off the ice whip, or the fire whip, or the wind whip. Which, I imagine if you use those properly, you can get some, um, some fairly decent damage boosts against the right bosses. But, I mostly didn't use them. The, the steel tip and the platinum tip were two stars of the show for me. Because just extra damage. Maybe some extra range, like a pixel or two, but I never really noticed. But yeah, the armor's good. Um, the stuff to find. The room decoration was strange part. Because I'm still not entirely sure what that does. Harmony of Dissonance Furniture. Because it said that Lydia will hold your hand in the ending, but I didn't notice that. So I'm curious. If you collect all the furniture, Lydia will stand clean to just arm at the end of the game. Yeah. Like, it's... There's not... Too much. It sounds like it does. And I think I can show... Let's see. Furniture. Yeah, let me crop that down a little bit. Yeah, I can show what it looks like. So this is it with all of the furniture in it. You know, like the little vases. You got the weird tanuki and the cat. Big-ass painting. Portal to the hell dimension. Because why not? But like... I feel like you should have- this room should have had more purpose. You should have been able to, like, come in here and based on the number of furniture items you have, have something happen. Maybe like, ah, oh, you rested, you get bonus, bonus experience or something. But like, I feel like there should be something. There should be a purpose to the furniture beyond just, you've decorated a room! Like, it's, it's very strange. Let's see. Yeah, like the bullet tip and the crushing stone only give 5 strength each. Whereas the platinum ball gives 20, the steel tip gives 10, and each of the element ones give plus 2. So if you're going for... Um, if you're going for extra damage on a boss, you'd be better off figuring out what the boss is weak to than using something like the crushing stone or the bullet tip. Especially because the bullets don't really do that much damage. But at the same time, you don't want the bullet tip to be the best, because then no one has to fight. 
You can just stand across the room constantly throwing fucking bullets at something. Uh, the energy circle was completely useless. Hold the attack button down to spit a whip. Or, you're not fucking disabled. Just spin the D-pad. Hold attack and spin the D-pad. It's not that hard. So, like, there's some items that don't feel that useful, but every game has that. So, like, all in all... Solid 8 out of 10. It's good gameplay. I like it. The music? It's not the best the Castlevania series has had, but it's also not the worst. That's fucking 64. What are you doing, YouTube? I clicked loop. Fuck off. Uh, let me find another song from this. Successor of Fate. Cool. Uh, apparently the team sacrificed quality sounding music for better graphics and that led to the music sounding distorted and more like a Game Boy game than a GBA one. Oh. Ah. Interesting. Even then, I don't... I don't mind the music in this. I think it's decent. Did that? No, it didn't. Okay, it just flashes white for some reason. Cool. Uh, but yeah, music's solid. I think Castlevania 4 might have had a weaker soundtrack. But that's because it didn't have the punch of the NES ones. And this one, I think, does interesting enough things with GBA sound, even if it isn't as high quality. But, like, it's... it's solid music. I like it. And lengthwise, I'd say it's a fairly solid Castlevania game. Full completion, 200%, and it took me 10, 15 hours or something? I don't remember how long I played this for. I could check, but I'm lazy. So I'm going to check. Uh... oh, not even 10. Yeah, that's... But three hours, six hours. Yeah, so a full place of this game takes like eight ish hours, eight, nine. And then you got boss rush mode, you got max in mode. You can try out no magic if you want. If you want to not have fun playing the video game. And there might be another, um, another secret thing. Does this website have information on. On, like, the secret game modes. Cheat codes. Here we go. Uh, let's see. I see you can play as Maxim. You can do a no magic run. You can do a hard mode run. I'm curious what that changes, but I'm not going to try it. This is the boss rush mode. You can play as Simon in the boss rush. You can play as Maxim in the boss rush. Uh... Yeah, so, like, I'd say the game has a good amount of content. A lot of it is going to be kind of reused just because of the nature of alternate characters and whatnot, but... I don't know. I think what the game has is, is a fair amount. So, like, I don't know. 8 out of 10. And at the same time, you don't really want a Castlevania game to be that long, because then it drags on. And there's not really enough that gets done in the game for it to really freshen things up too much. So, like, I don't know. I think maybe the length is a bit long if you're going for 100% or 200% completion. Just because you're going to be tracking down one small room on the opposite side of the castle, and then you have to hit that room twice. So, it, it gets a bit padded out more than the usual Castlevania game. But, I think it's fine. Jank-wise, wasn't that jank. Things all mostly worked the way they did. There wasn't too much shenanigans happening. Those... Arakabi? Akarabi? Akibi? Whatever the pot enemies were, like the big vases that blew at me. Um, I swear those things didn't get sent to the heavens when I killed them before. Maybe that's a bit of jank, but like, ultimately, not a, not a jank game. And for DLC. GBA edit then. Not a thing. Uh, but yeah, all in all. How many distance? Fun game. 
I liked it. I liked it more than Circle of the Moon. And I don't remember what I gave that. But... I don't know. Oh, God. So, like, 8.5 out of 10. I liked it. It was fun. I had a good time with it. It was worth going for the hundo percent. Just to... To explore it and enjoy it. I didn't get burnt out like, uh... Circle of the Moon. But yeah. Fun game. And, like, if I was a kid and I got that on my fucking Game Boy... Hell yeah. I'd play the shit out of that. Circle of the Moon I would not have played, because that game was ass. With that, Harmony of Dissonance finished. The next Castlevania game I'll play is Aria of Sorrow, which is actually... Of all the ones I've played so far, probably my favorite. Because it's Symphony of the Night, but slightly worse looking because it's a Game Boy game. But a better game. And it actually has challenge. Like, there's, there's some bosses that when you first fight them are genuinely difficult. That's nice. So looking forward to that. And then there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, DLC, and eight. Eight games and one DLC. And then I've finished the Castlevanias. Hopefully I can finish those in time to start that next series. That's happening next month, and then there's the other things. Yeah. I should be fine. Either way. That'll be it for me for today. Thank you to everyone for stopping by. Have a good one. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.